Hi, everybody. Um, hope you enjoyed that talk. Uh, up next, we have Chris Woods. Uh, he's talked to, he's here to talk about payments and um, and how he's he's going about creating a, sh a secure payment mechanism via APIs. So over to you, Chris. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Ben. Thanks for introducing me. As uh, Ben rightly pointed out, my name's Chris Wood. I'm a freelance developer and uh, architect and writer, and I make good cups of tea as well. So. Lots of strings to my bow. Today, I'm going to be talking about leveraging WebAuthn for payments through secure payment confirmation. Uh, I think you know we rock up at things like API days, and we hear a lot about REST. We hear a lot about Web APIs. We hear a lot about GraphQL. All right, uh, but I think it's good to dive into other subject matters that are really relevant. Um, one of them is APIs that you find in the browser. Um, and that's where we get onto the topic of WebAuthn. WebAuthn is a, an API in the browser that's specifically uh, created for doing authentication. Um, and in that specificity, it's also there to, to try and decouple um, authentication from stuff like username, password, and things that are uh, considered relatively weak into something much, much stronger. So. We'll start with WebAuthn. We'll look at what WebAuthn is all about, and then we'll move on to why WebAuthn underpins something called secure payment confirmation. So what is WebAuthn? Let's get into that. Uh, it's uh, an API, WebAuthn, stands for web authentication that uh, supports uh, biometrics. Um, that's the, really the fundamentals of what it is. It was created by the FIDO Alliance, uh, the FIDO Alliance uh, essentially exists to remove passwords from the internet. Rather than using username, passwords, stuff that can be stolen, it wants to use um, stuff that uh, can be uh, verified by something you are, uh, biometrics, for example, um, and supporting that with cryptographic proofs that you've actually uh, verified yourself, that you've, you've authenticated. So WebAuthn is an API. Right, it's built into the browser. It's built on into all the major browsers in Chrome, Edge, uh, Safari, um, and it's supported across Mac OS and Windows. Um, what it really does, and the thing that's really great about WebAuthn, is the fact that um, it provides a loose coupling to the underlying biometric capabilities of of a platform. So, um, if you imagine. If you imagine uh, the way that a mobile app uses Touch ID, for example, it does delegation to the operating system. The operating system has to be invoked in a particular way. You have to know how to say, let's say, do um, do a thumbprint or a face recognition on Android. You code that into your your app, okay, and it returns. It's a delegation. It returns a response. And you'll just get effectively getting a yes no answer at the application level. This provides a much looser coupling in that the WebAuthn API is the same across all the browsers. So, code once, doesn't matter what browser you go into, you're going to get the same result. It works in the same way. So, it's a nice loose coupling to the underlying biometric capabilities of the, 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 the platform you're on. And of course, that's then exposed in the browser. So, you've got greater flexibility. You're not asking um, a user to be handed off to a particular um, mobile app through a deep link or something if they're using a website. You can rely on the fact that if you've been for a registration ceremony with this user, they can um, authenticate biometrically at your website um, with the minimum amount of fuss possible. So this nice loose coupling works cross browser, works cross platform. Um, th there's an increasing level of ubiquity in the availability of WebAuthn as people renew their phones and renew their um, desktops and whatever. And more and more um, appliances have got um, uh, biometric capabilities. With WebAuthn in place, you're able to leverage those as a programmer, as a as a um, as a relying party. You're relying on the fact that um, the platform's going to supply this information for you. So that's. Uh, a really neat feature of, of what WebAuthn is all about. Um, but another neat feature of WebAuthn is that it doesn't just give you a delegation. 
it also gives you um, uh, some proofs of authentication back. So that's called an authentication assertion. So an authentication assertion is essentially a signed payload that says the user authenticated themselves. Here's the identifier for the credential they identified themselves with. And here's, um, here's a signature that says they did. So because of this loosely coupled architecture, what you've got during your registration ceremony, we won't go into details now because 20 minutes, I could, I could talk for an hour on this. I won't because that's quite boring. But essentially the, the thing with the capability to prompt the user for their biometric gesture is called um, the authenticator. That is responsible for, for, for one, talking to the user saying, please authenticate yourself. It's also responsible for, for creating a private key, which it stores that represents that biometric gesture. So if you register, let's say your thumb, your thumb's reg already registered on, let's say you've got one of these, your thumb's already registered. Then you can reuse that registration as, 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 as a, essentially a, um, a private key stored on the authenticator um, that you can then use later in order to, to authenticate yourself at a given website and that website will have a copy of the public key which they get during the registration ceremony and again this is all details which i don't have time to go into now they'll have a, a copy of the public key so that they can then verify um, the the signature they get back and that that relying party is also responsible for giving you challenge so they get some um some entropy in terms of how the, the, the signature is created, but that's based on the, the a, a value that they're creating up front. So what you get is signed proofs of authentication. It's not just a delegation. It's not just asking the operating systems to take over and you get a yes or no answer back. You get signed proofs of authentication out of the box with WebAuthn. Um, so um, you get much stronger proofs that um, that the users authenticated themselves using a credential you know about on a um, on a given essentially on a given device. Um, so each credential is tied to a web origin. This is the last major point about this. So you go to a website, let's say it's auth.apple.com. I'm not sure if that exists or not, but it's an example. You go there, you do a registration ceremony, you tap in your Apple ID, uh, password, you then authenticate on a device where it prompts you to tap in a pin. And then it says, oh, actually, we can we can give you a web authentication credential. Uh, next time you go there, that particular web origin using the credential you created can prompt you to authenticate biometrically um, at the at the web browser layer. OK. Um, so each credential is tied to a specific domain. That's that's the limits of how you can use that credential. There are ways and means to engineer scenarios where you can tailor a, a journey so that um, the um, the user, when they are when they're asked to authenticate, they arrive at a uh, uh, they arrive at um, the website where the the the, the credential is registered. Um, but essentially, um, when you go to that website, you're going to use that credential there. So that's what WebAuthn is all about. OK, now, I'm a big believer in showing rather than telling. Uh, so I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough uh, of, uh, of WebAuthn in action. Um, so I've come to this lovely site. It's created by the good people at um, Auth0 and it's just it's called WebAuthn.me. Um, and anybody can go and use this. Um, so it's just going to demonstrate the, this process of uh, registering and then authenticating. So I've already, uh, for the sake of time, tapped in my password, chris at grafiso.io. I'm going to hit register. When I hit register, the browser's asked the relying party, the domain we're on for a challenge. And then it's prompting me. Um, I'm not sure if you can see this on the screen share. I think it's uh, it's on my device. It's prompting me to, to hit touch ID. Unfortunately, it didn't show you that. That's the beauty of live demos. But anyway, um, so essentially what happened was it um, it prompted me to touch um, my touch ID. Um, that then returned a new 
uh, public key, which the the relying party, uh, webauthn.me, could then uh, store away, um, ally with my credential, and then um, save that for future use. So if I hit next, um, you'll see that I've now got a credential stored away. Uh, I've got a record of it on my on uh, my laptop, and now I can just hit login, right? So if I hit login, you'll see the that it go through the process again. It talks to the relying party, gets a challenge. Unfortunately, you can't see me having to touch my touch ID because uh, it's not being broadcast. I apologize for that. It would make it so much more interesting. <laughs> uh, but that's how it, it that's how WebAuthn works. Uh, trust me. Hopefully, you saw me. I was touching um, touching the touch ID. Now, if I was to do this again, I could actually show you this in pro in in flight. So let's go and re-register. I've refreshed the page. It doesn't store anything essential about um, about me. I'll just type in Chris. Okay. And this time, when it when it prompts me, it's going to ask me to authenticate on my phone. And I could hold this up and show you me authenticating on my phone. You see, you don't see this, but it's saying I, I, I'm attached to your, your smartphone. So if I just hold that up, it's prompting me. You'll see it's asking me for a biometric. So uh, I thumbprint. Oh, and it, see the prompt's gone away, but the rest of the, the, the process finishes. So, so that's where both any action. Oh, glad I had a backup plan. Um, so, as I said, loosely coupled architecture uh, allows users to strongly authenticate, uses biometrics in the background, lots of good stuff about it. There, there's a load of technical detail we could go into, but we won't. Um, so what's secure payment for confirmation? Well, secure con con uh, payment confirmation is a, a, is a product of the Web Payments Working Group at the W3C. Why am I interested in that? because I'm on the Web Payments Working Group. Um, my particular interest is on open banking there, but that's by the by for the purposes of this. It's probably the, the most important work that this group is doing at the moment. Um, secure payment confirmation, like WebAuthn, is an API specification that browsers will, uh, will implement. It's currently at first public draft. So you won't go out and find this in Chrome or whatever at the moment. Um, but essentially it adds a payment extension to WebAuthn. So rather than it just being um, allied just to the act of authentication and then uh, supplying a, uh, a response that, um, that essentially um, evidence the authentication took place, this adds this payments context whereby you add in parameters like the, the pay origin and the amount and the payment instrument and all those get fed into web Authent as a um as extra parameters that um that are then cryptographically signed it also adds a new actor um <coughs> pardon me adds a new actor the merchant so they were extending how web Authent works and adding um somebody else that can actually invoke the um the web Authent api um so it's not tightly coupled to the web origin that it was created at anymore, you can allow the merchant to, to take part in this as well. So the merchant can, in this case, is, is responsible for the UX. They're talking to the customer who they have a relationship with, and they're seeking payment for some goods or services they're selling the customer. What they want is to then be able to go to the, the issuing bank, let's say it's a card payment, the issuing bank and say, hey, this customer has agreed to pay for uh, an amount of money using this payment instrument, and here's my web origin. Here's who I am. Um, so the bank can then be responsible for um, authorizing that payment based on um, not only knowing those things, which they'd already know if they were using uh, 3DS or something that already exists. They'd also have a cryptographic assertion that came from WebAuthn that had all the payment details in it, well, not all of them, but the most important ones. And then um, um, uh, they were able to then say yes or no to the, um, to the uh, requested payment in a much stronger way than they previously would have done because they own the credential ID, they know the public key, so they're able to, um, able to um, 
then authorize payment based on some um, very good indicators that the user is actually authorizing this payment. They want to make this payment and they're authorizing it. And we know they are because of how the way WebAuthn works. It's making sure the user's actually doing an authorization, uh, authentication using a biometric gesture in order to make sure that they have actually um, agreed to this transaction. So this is quite nice because it's also engineered to meet dynamic linking requirements of PSD2. Um, you, you're bundling in the pay origin, you're bundling in the um, the amount. Um, so there's some good bit, good, really good stuff in terms of um, actually creating a very good package of information cryptographically signed according to a credential the bank knows about this web authending they register with the user up front. Um, so that's that's a very neat feature. I won't go into too much more detail. There's a post uh, on uh, the Web Payments Working Group GitHub site, uh, GitHub repository. You can go and read about it there. Um, so again, it's easier to show rather than tell. If I just refresh this page, this is the boilerplate um, site that we've got at the moment that demonstrates how this works. Um, as you can see, this is a kind of standard uh, merchant scenario, you've got a price, amount, um, uh, a payment instrument, the user's tapped in their card number, CVV, whatever, obviously that's a dummy card number. You hit pay, and unfortunately, I can't show you again, <laughs> and I don't have a backup plan for this one, but it, the, the, the browser's prompting me in using the authenticator in order to, um, in order to request payment, and I can click verify, and I'm going to get an authentication assertion back once I've touched my touch ID. Um, so if I just go back one slide here, okay, that that is what you saw on you would have seen on screen if uh, if I was able to broadcast that. I do apologise. <laughs> um, so same kind of process though. WebAuthn is passing off to the authenticator. The authenticator is then prompting the user with a bunch of rich details that they can then verify uh, using a biometric gesture, face, fingerprint, whatever, any appendage that you've registered, um, to then wrap up all that information in a strong package that they're gonna send to the issuer. So, so the use cases for SBC, well, the, the, the first one's pretty obvious, you know, um, having this available gives you strong customer authentication, You've got two factors. You've got um, you've got a biometric gesture because the user is doing something that is them, uh, the inherent one, and then you've also got possession because the public key that's been uh, that the um, the uh, the issuer holds um, is allied to a private key which is stored on one of these things or on your desktop or whatever um, that can't move. Um, you can't get it out, you can't export it, you can't do anything with it. The only thing you can do is destroy it. So you've got two factors. Uh, so that's a pretty convenient thing. You've got two factors out of the box with a, via a, um, an underlying API, the WebAuthn API that's ubiquitous. So it's exceedingly convenient uh, as far as I'm concerned. It's, a, it's a, a, a great thing to have as part of the payments ecosystem um that uh is also supported in the latest versions of 3d secure so i think from uh 2.1 <coughs> pardon me 2.1 onwards i think is uh where web then starts to be supported i think in the next version secure payment confirmation will also be supported itself so um so in in terms of underlying protocols that support e-commerce um they're starting to bundle in um, support for, for web, both web authen and when it um, comes to a, a um, when it comes to a, 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 an implementer's draft, um, then uh, web, the secure payment confirmation is going to be there as well. Um, but also, and this is where I step in in secure payment confirmation land, it's easily pluggable into other other uh, security protocols. So I've put here OpenID Connect because I worked on UK open banking standards and OpenID Connect is what I know. Um, you could essentially take that cryptographic assertion that you got from secure payment confirmation and stick it in an author authentication request. 
in open id open id connect either as a claim um or in login hint or somewhere so some mechanism to transport that from the the third party provider to the fpsp the bank that's owning the credential and saying look i prompted the user they've authenticated biometrically here's a signature that allies to a public key you already hold so please let's get on and allow this payment to initiate thank you very much so um so easily pluggable into into other protocols um but the fact of the matter is is you know the way that i'm trying to describe web is it's uh it's it's um it's ubiquitous you know it, it it's in every browser it's supported at the operating system level um so in terms of actually in terms of actually uh leveraging that um the um the, there's lots and lots of opportunities sorry i'm gonna have to speed up because i've babbled on far too much um so uh you could for example deploy this across corporate infrastructure or bring your own device kit you've got nothing to install it's lightweight it'll just work so you could do multi-party authorization inside a bank using online banking um uh, without having to install mobile operating uh, mobile applications, whatever. Um, it's across. It works across security realms. So you could have outsource your internet banking. You could have the credentials owned by somebody else. Um, you know that merchant role could be played by a bunch of different people. I've already made this point. Nothing to install. Ah. So uh, you're just about talking about going to a website, uh, registering the credential there then actually invoking that credential at that website and in secure payment confirmation um, uh, scenario, you can actually do that from a merchant. You can initiate from a merchant, a merchant you trust, or another party playing that role. Uh, but the thing for me is, this is just one example. This is the first time where Wolfen is being taken and played into a particular industry. What about other industries? I mean, the one thing that strikes me is secure identity confirmation. So we talk about digital identity, it's the holy grail. Some com countries are, and territories are much more up on uh, digital identity than others. But why can't this be the bedrock of actually a digital identity that's usable? You know, you go and go and do uh, your registration for a digital identity, do the KYC, prove who you are, and then register a, a web authentic credential or, you know, a secure identity credential and use that whenever you need to prove your identity, either at a government site or wherever, right? Wherever somebody really needs to know it's you, you've got a strong factor in order to prove it's you. All right, Chris. that's it, done. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Chris, thank you so much for sharing that insight. It's super interesting, um, you know, writing, being involved in the open banking standards and seeing how you've kind of implemented this over the years. Um, it's super interesting to learn about. Um, I think we're gonna have to send over a camera next time so we can see you press the the yeah, as we do yeah. the demos. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's, it's I think I think it, it, no, it was a great talk. Um, Tom Tom from the audience asked the question. I think he, you may have answered it, but um, does does your does the does the uh, does the product integrate with FAPI CIBA? Uh, what's what's FAPI CIBA? <laughs> It's uh, he, he, there's another reference around plugging into OIDC. Oh, well. so ah, right, he means as uh, uh, CBA, um, client initiated back channel authentication. Uh, yeah, no, no, no reason why it shouldn't. Uh, it's just up to awesome. the to the authentication server to support it. Awesome. I mean, we've got one more question left. The only question I had was, um, I find this super convenient. Um, you know, to learn that the technology is open source and, and easy, well, very interoperable with a lot of different products. Um, what is the main barrier to people adopting this? You know, uh, what, what is kind of holding back mass rollout of this at the moment? Uh, well, it's a nascent technology. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's um, it's uh, it's only recently been ubiquitously um, supported uh, across all the browsers and uh, operating systems. Um, the, the secure payment confirmation obviously is still a draft. Um, the thing that actually will will stimmy any um, rollout, certainly in the payment space, is the willingness of uh, card issuers, uh, banks to adopt it. I mean, because they're they're the credential owners, and they've done an awful lot of investment in um, yeah. in getting their mobile apps uh, yeah. out 
installed, getting people using them, to then swap that as an authentication factor for this obviously needs investment. Uh, yeah, so, absolutely. yeah, that's, that's the main thing. But, but other so, industries Chris, don't have that, then they can crack on as far as I'm concerned. Awesome. Chris, thank you again so much for the presentation. It's great to have you here. Um, and we, yeah, we'll hope, we hope to see you again. Uh, yeah, thanks. See you again. thanks a lot. Cheers. Thanks, Chris. Have a good day, everyone.